الحمد لله الحمد لله حق حمده والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه إلى يوم الدين We begin by praising Allah Ta'ala as it is His right to be praised to be praised All praise is His He is the creator of everything in existence He sent the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to us as the seal of all prophets the last messenger who brought to us this deen Islam. We ask Allah to shower him with his mercy and his peace and his blessings. For him, for his companions, his blessed family, for his forefathers and brethren in prophecy, and for all those who follow in his footsteps with love and sincerity and genuineness. May Allah make us amongst them. Ameen. Allah Ta'ala in his infinite wisdom created humanity. And he commanded the angels to prostrate to them, to our forefather Adam alayhi salam. He then sent Adam out from heaven to this earth. And so now Adam alayhi salam reproduced. And so humanity spread all over the world. And throughout time as humanity aged, Allah Ta'ala sent to them prophets. Sent to them prophets to reveal to them that they have a Lord who created them. That there is a reckoning coming for them where they will be judged. And he sent these prophets as well to tell them how to be successful in this world and to be successful, how to be successful in the coming reckoning, the coming judgments. If all of humanity were to sit in their armchairs and ponder and reflect for years, for generations, for eons about how to attain Allah's mercy and how His good graces, they wouldn't be able to. How many of us can come to the conclusion for just from thinking using our rationale, can come to the conclusion that we have to pray five times a day? That we have to pray a certain way, this many raka'at, at these times. That we have to recite these things. How many of humanity come to the conclusion that they have to fast a certain month in a certain way? They have to pay 2.5% of their wealth on some of their wealth, not all of their wealth. That certain things you make conditions in your business transactions can make your entire transaction invalid and make it a means for achieving Allah's ta'ala or receiving Allah's wrath. And in doing it a different way, you can attain Allah's mercy and His good graces. All of these things are unattainable to humanity. You just can't come to realize it. It's impossible. And so Allah Ta'ala sent to us the prophets to teach us these things. To teach us how to live our lives in a way where we attract Allah Ta'ala's mercy and His graces and achieve His pleasure and ultimately enter heaven. And in doing so, in following the message of these prophets, we not only attract to ourselves, goodness in the afterlife by entering heaven, we attract to ourselves goodness in this life. Through His mercy, Allah Ta'ala, by following this from the Prophet Sallallahu we deflect from ourselves calamity. We deflect from ourselves tribulation. We deflect from ourselves any sort of restriction you might feel in your heart, any sort of stress, any sort of, any sort of disease. It all goes away just by virtue of following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in all of your actions. And so all these different things that Prophet Sassam came with, where he taught us how to live our life, all of it really is summarized in five rulings. Every single action humanity can perform, whether it's by your arms or your legs or your stomach, what you eat, what you drink, what you look at, what you listen to, what flutters across the depths of your heart, every single thing humanity can do comes down to five rulings. It's either obligatory, or it's recommended, or it's something that's called mubah, it's neutral, or it's makruh, or it's haram. It's obligatory, meaning if you leave it, you get punished, and if you do it, you get rewarded. It's mustahab, or it's sunnah, meaning if you do it, you get rewarded, and if you leave it, nothing happens to you. It's mubah, meaning if you were to leave it, nothing happens to you. If you were to do it, nothing happens to you. It's makruh, meaning if you were to leave it, you get rewarded. And if you were to do it, nothing happens to you. Or it's haram. If you were to do it, you will be punished. And if you were to leave it, you get rewarded. Every single thing one can possibly do is summarized in one of these five rulings. Every single action we do, every single thing we can say, it has a ruling attached to it. And these rulings are phenomenal. The Prophet came to teach us these things, to give us understanding of his religion, a term we commonly call fiqh, which technically 
The, the scholar is used to refer to the science of knowing these rulings, which action of a human being is considered obligatory or mustahab or sunnah or mubah or makruh or haram. But the greater meaning of the word, which is to have an understanding of the revelation of God, according to the Prophet according to how he brought it to us. And this understanding, this understanding is the prophetic inheritance. And this understanding is what transforms people's lives. It's an elixir if we were to drink it. By connecting with sound scholarship and the people of God, by taking from them, putting it into our hearts and practicing it, it completely transforms an individual's life. Someone might think, well, if I were to learn this, my life is not black and white. It's just binary, ones and zeros. Do this, don't do this. Do that, don't do that. What a life. Not quite. In fact, drinking this elixir makes you see in color for the first time in your life. Allah Ta'ala opens your eyes and you see a spectrum before you of opportunities. Opportunities to become closer to your Lord. Opportunities that if it were for your ignorance, they would just pass by you and you wouldn't even see them. But the one who attains this inheritance of the prophets and drinks it and practices it, all they see in the world is a sequence or a series of opportunities to achieve Allah's mercy. And the one who doesn't, halas, they just live their life. They live their life a certain way, and for them, their life is binary. For them, their life is binary. I have to do this, I cannot do that. They just see three colors. Have to, cannot do, I want to do, and that's it. And so Allah Ta'ala, He sent to us the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to teach us these meanings. And for us to take this inheritance from him and to apply it into our lives. For this reason, for this reason, the pious of the past used to say, a Sufi faqi. A Sufi faqi. A Sufi. Who is the Sufi? The one who walks the path of tasawwuf. The one who takes the path of God, striving to have, hoping to have a level of ihsan with him, to worship him as if he can see him. Or otherwise, knowing that Allah sees, he's, he's, sees himself the worshiper. So, the Sufi, this person who wants to achieve proximity to the Lord, who is he? He's someone who has understanding. He's someone who understands the inheritance of the prophets. He's someone who sees the world in the spectrum of vivid color that other people do not see. He is the person who, when he steps out there, all he sees are opportunities. Opportunities to reach Allah Ta'ala. Whereas everyone else, is living their life like the masses. Living their life like the mass. And so there is not a marriage between tasawwuf and fiqh. Rather, they are one. They are one. Like two sides of the same coin. Impossible to separate them two if you want to practice either of them soundly. Imam Malik said in a famous saying, he said, مَن تَفَقَّهَ وَلَمْ يَتَسَوَّفْ فَقَدْ تَفَسَّدَ the one who learns these prophetic rulings and etiquettes and the sharia, but does not attain the knowledge of genuineness, of ihsan, of sincerity, of tasawwuf, what is there? What's going to happen to them? They're going to be one of the fusaq. They're going to be a corrupt individual. Why? Because all these here are shortcuts, right? I've learned the rulings, which you can and cannot do. Well, if I just step here, avoid that, I do this, I'll get, still get to where I want. And he said, وَمَنْ تَصَوَّفَ وَلَمْ يَتَفَقَّ فَقَدْ تَزَنْدَقْ The person who tries to attain something of the knowledge of tasawwuf, considers himself a practitioner of this blessed tradition, without the knowledge of fiqh, the understanding of the inheritance of the Prophet ﷺ, what's going to happen to them? فَقَدْ تَزَنْدَقْ there will be someone of no religion. You'll be religionless. How is that possible? You have these feelings. You want to become closer to God. And so where is your moral compass? What feels good? I do this. I just feel so close to God. Little do you know that thing is actually haram. Or it's makro. Or it's this or it's that. You just follow a compass you've designed for yourself based on what you think or what you feel will bring you closer to Allah Ta'ala. You are trying to get to Allah Ta'ala on your own terms and not on His terms. You are someone else and you have no religion. Ma'asalama. وَلَكِنْ مَنْ تَفَقَّهَ 
فقد تحقق. The one who learns this inheritance, achieves this understanding, and practices this, this matter of tasawwuf, what is their affair? فقد تحقق. They are someone who they've realized. They've come to fruition. Something has manifested. What is that thing? That is the sharia of Allah Ta'ala. That is what the Prophet ﷺ came with, and that is what we all should strive to have. And so, we find ourselves, alhamdulillah, in front of a door. And this door is our coming to this blessed seminary. This seminary that if we were to open the door and step through, we start taking this path of tafaqquh and tasawwuf, hand in hand. Knowledge, devotion, and service. Three principles. They're not individual. They come together as a package. And so the one who takes these meanings and, again, doesn't marry them, understands they come together. Just like how you have several fingers all part of your hand. The one who takes it like that and implements it in their heart, فَقَدْ تَحَقَّقْ They've come to manifest in themselves the real meanings behind the inheritance of the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. We ask Allah Ta'ala to give us this mean, give us these meanings, give us tawfiq to act upon them, make us people of Qiyam wa Siyam al Quran, and to guide all of our family members who are not Muslim to Islam, all of our family members who are perhaps not on the Sunnah Prophet to the Sunnah Prophet to make us people who are keys to good and locks for all evil. We ask that for ourselves and for everyone who is in attendance and listening and watching, all those in our loins yet to be born into this world. Alhamdulillah.